this is Samsung's latest Gen 5 SSD. In fact, I think this is their first Gen 5 SSD. And I believe most people are gonna be wrong about this drive. Because if you look at the box, it says here 5,000 megabytes per second. And you're saying, well, that's not impressive. That's not Gen 5 speed. But believe me, this is one of the most genius SSDs I have ever seen. And I really hope that some of the other manufacturers are gonna follow the suit. Let me explain. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Now, before I'm gonna talk about the specs, I wanna demonstrate the actual sequential read and write speeds, which are basically what is for marketing very hard to tell difference in real world use cases. Not most people, but for some reason it is important, mostly random read and write speeds. But if you look at the sequential read speed here on Crystal Disk Mark, then this is actually lower than Samsung 980 Pro and quite a bit lower actually. And it's only just in the middle of the pack there. And it's actually lower than most of the high end or even mid range Gen 4 NVMEs. 5,091 megabytes per second is what I'm getting here. And if we're looking at the write speed, it's even lower, about 4,240 megabytes per second. And as you can see, we have Sabre Rocket 4.0 that was released years ago, uh, which is still faster than this one over here. And the same with Samsung 980 Pro, their Gen 4 drives that was released years ago. So why did they release this. So here's the magic sauce. This 990 EVO is actually a Gen 5 and a Gen 4 drive. Gen 4 lanes and Gen 5 lanes, they double. So if you've got two Gen 4 lanes, that is one Gen 5 lane. So four Gen 4 lanes is two Gen 5 lanes. And this SSD is actually two Gen 5 lanes and four Gen 4 lanes, so it's a hybrid. If you plug this into your Gen 5 platform, like a Ryzen 5000 or Intel's 12th, 13th or 14th Gen, then it uses up only two lanes of PCI Gen 5. If you plug this into your PCI Gen 4 platform, let's say 11th Gen of Intel or Ryzen 5000, then you're gonna get Gen 4 speeds and full PCI Gen 4 X4 speeds, what you get from there. And you might be saying, yeah, but why is this important? What you have seen in the recent years is the CPU platforms for the main pro-consumer platform, whether it's Intel's, you know, i9, 13900K, 14900K, or Ryzen 9 7950X, or the upcoming processors, most likely the PCA lanes are not going to get increased. But you can decrease the PCI lanes because we've moved on a generation and the new generation actually lets more bandwidth, no traffic through those lanes, which means that we can save the bandwidth. And I talked about this in my PCI Gen 5 hack where we talked about the GPU that has an M.2 SSD in there. And I really hope some of the PCIe storage and GPUs are gonna do exactly the same thing because you can get PCIe Gen 5 X8 graphics card that's exactly the same bandwidth as PCIe Gen 4 X16, which means that we could get extra eight PCIe lanes where you could slot extra four of these M.2 SSDs and you're gonna get top high-end Gen 4 speeds. But that's not all. As well as saving some PCIe lanes, we're also gonna be more power efficient. So this 990 EVO is about 70% more efficient than the, the 970 EVO or 25% less power consumption than the 970 EVO, which is very impressive. So we're getting a new drive, less power, but better performance. So let's see how this hybrid architecture works in actual benchmarks. So I am using PCMark 10 storage benchmark, which tests different scenarios. This quick system drive benchmark, what we're gonna be looking at first, is a benchmark that is using a lot of small, different little files on the drive and really test the random read and write speeds, but in a little bit of a less intense 
workload. So this test is good for people who are looking for a nice secondary SSD for their system. And now when we're looking at the benchmarks over here, would you look at that? This Samsung 990 EVO is right on the top there next to those Gen 5 drives and better than the Samsung 990 Pro Gen 4 top end drive. Better than the Solidine P44 Pro, which was the top drive I tested last year. This is still better about 10%. As you can see, quite a big jump between the Solidime P44 Pro and 990 EVO 2TB one, both of them 2TB version. So as you can see, this guy has very good random read and write speeds. Let's take a look at data drive benchmark. And here we're seeing very similar results. Samsung 990 EVO is right on the top there. The third fastest drive I have ever tested. Faster than Samsung 990 Pro and P44, which are Gen 4 drives. High-end drives have much higher sequential read and write speeds, but this guy is faster. Moving on to full system drive benchmark, and this is where we're gonna be testing it more like a system, where an operating system or program is run out there, where we have more intense workflow, where it's reading lots of random little small files all over the drive, and like a system or like a program when you're running this on there. So drives that perform well in this test are good for project drives or a system drive or operating system drive. And here we can see that the 990 EVO is just a little bit slower than the high-end Gen 4 drives. We're talking about Samsung 990 Pro, Solidine P44 Pro. It's only marginally lower than them, which actually is quite impressive to me. Next, we're gonna be looking at the drive performance consistency test, which actually is not a very highly likely workload. This is where we're gonna be absolutely hammering this drive for about 20 hours. We're gonna be writing over 23 terabytes of files on it, filling the drive about three times, and absolutely seeing how far can we push this drive and how well does it keep those read and write speeds at the end of this test. What I have seen on this test is that drives that perform better in this test are drives that have DRAM and drives that are larger capacity, which means that you can write easier more files on it and delete them and more files and so on. Here we're seeing that the Samsung 990 EVO scores somewhere slightly above the middle of the pack, higher end of the middle of the pack. But interestingly, within 1% of the Corsair MP7000 one terabyte drive, which is a gen four drive, four lanes, 10,000 megabytes read and write speed, something like that, which is quite impressive. Now, some of the higher end gen four drives that are higher in capacity and higher sequential read and write speeds are performing better. As you can see on the top there, we have 990 Pro and Samsung 980 Pro is actually better there as well. So in consistency test, this drive isn't quite as good. In terms of terabyte written spec, this is the same as all the other Samsung drives. The 600 terabyte written for one terabyte and 1200 for two terabytes and 2400 for four terabytes. But so far there's only <coughs> one terabyte and two terabyte versions of this drive available. I'd love to see a four terabyte version as well, which I'm sure they will release later on. But now then, is this a good drive then or not? And also importantly, this drive is single sided. So all of the chips are on the top side and nothing on the bottom. So if you do wanna put this on a laptop perhaps, where you are very limited in space, then this does fit in there very nicely. Is this drive worth considering looking at because it's not necessarily the fastest drive out there. And I think Samsung is onto something very, very interesting here. Because of the hybrid-like architecture, it's not really architecture, more like hybrid interface, Gen 4, Gen 5, two lanes, four lanes. This drive, I think, is gonna pave a way to something very interesting. We're gonna get much faster random read and write speeds. I would love to see a 990 or, I don't know, 1090 Pro where we're gonna have two Gen 5 lanes, but higher in sequential read and write speeds, where perhaps we have more and faster DRAM on this and really top it in terms of the consistency test as well as some of the full system benchmark tests, which would be very, very good for this drive as well. But why I can see this is important is because now, if motherboard manufacturers would also give us perhaps more M.2 slots on the motherboard and give us two PCI Gen 5 lanes on them, on e two each, rather than one PCI Gen 5 lane that is four, 
you know, slots bandwidth or give us the same hybrid kind of switching thing that if you plug in two PCIe Gen 5 lane SSD, it's going to drop down two and then some of the other ones. I think this is very interesting, especially when you're looking at the random read and write speeds, which are most important about these things. So if you want to use this as a project drive, it's an okay drive, but then as a secondary drive or an OS drive, it's a very, very good drive because the random read and write speeds, as you can see there, are performing right up there in terms of quick system benchmarks and so on. Now, in terms of pricing, can I be honest? I don't actually know what this is priced at. So I highly recommend you check this out and check out the pricing in terms of the deals for other bits there. Now, if this drive is going to be priced just lower than the higher end Gen 4 drives, then, I mean, this is a no-brainer. This is absolutely amazing. Now, if Samsung's going to be a little bit cheeky and it's going to charge more than high-end Gen 4 drives, like more than the 990 Pro or so on, then, um, you know, probably not worth it. But I believe it's going to be lower. The only thing I wish this drive has is a, a DRAM. I wish they did a 990 EVO or call it some something else, 999 EVO or something like that with DRAM. So this drive would get DRAM. Right now we're using a host memory buffer, which, you know, in most of the random read and write speeds probably is good but then in consistency tests for example a project drive for creators where we're working with large assets and live read and write speeds perhaps not so good let me know what you think i'm going to leave this drive in the description below as well as some of the build guides for your pc if you want to build yourself the best bang for what create a pc it's linked in the description below whatever your budget is there's one build guide for you check it out thanks guys for watching Bye bye